Hydrain is a state-of-the-art, open-source image generation model, challenging, to some degree, even ChatGPT's 4.0 image gen model, only really falling short in creating unprompted text. If you want to learn more, check out this video here, where I cover how to use a standalone G-Radio of Hydrain along with an extensive image generation comparison with other key models. However, being an open source model, not only does Hydream come relatively close to competing with ChatGPT's 4.0 image generation, it has the added benefit of being open source, which means the model can be fine-tuned and doesn't have as many of the restrictions and challenges that using the ChatGPT 4.0 image generator has. While it is an incredible model, it just as often has situations where it won't generate for you for some reason or another. And of course, one of the great benefits of being an open source model is that it can be customized and quantized, which means that even if the base model itself is too big to run on most consumer GPUs, it can be watered down to a version that can run on most consumer GPUs, which is the case that we're seeing with Hydream right now. So while in my previous video, I covered using Hydream using a G radio installer for which I have a version of which that downloads and installs quantized versions to run on your computer. Today, we're going to be covering how to run Hydream on Comfy UI, including both the full and quantized versions of the models. And if you stay tuned till the end, I'll even show you a couple of extra little tricks to help you get the most out of your Hydream models, especially if you're using quantized versions. So let's dive in. For this video, I'm expecting that you already have Comfy UI installed. If not, check out the description below for a video tutorial on that. Fortunately, as of the time of this video, Comfy UI has natively integrated Hydream, meaning that we shouldn't have to install too many custom nodes, if any at all. The only thing that we need to do is download and place a couple, a handful of models in the respective folders and use the workflow that I will provide. So you can see the basic workflow right here. It's a very standard and straightforward workflow with the key elements being a model or unit loader, which we've got here. In this case, I have the GGUF loader as I'm running a Q8 and Q6 version of the model on my RTX 3090. That feeds into a model sampling SD3, which I've noticed has a shift of nine when using a quantized model and a shift of three when using a full model. I will need to experiment with that further and I'll make it up and I'll put out a video on that once I do. But these are some observations that I've seen from people's experiences on Reddit. The other major thing here is we've got this brand new quadruple clip loader, which allows you to load in four text encoders, which is required for Hydrate. This also could have a lot to do with the fact that it is so brilliant at generating text. And as I mentioned earlier, the only weakness is when it needs to generate text that you haven't specifically prompted. In addition to the quadruple clip loader, there's also the Hydream clip text encoder. Now this one is optional and you can, instead of feeding the clip into your positive and negative prompts, you can instead feed it into this one and then separate your text prompt by the various clips. Now I have not experimented with this and I will try to put out a video on how to best take advantage of this at a later date. But if you do get the chance to mess around with it and you do have some insights, please do come by the Discord. We'd love to hear from you and see what results you're getting by using the different text boxes. In this workflow, that feeds into your positive and negative prompts. And unlike Flux, I am very happy to see the return of negative prompts as that really helps eliminate things from an image that you don't want. With Flux, we had to find ways to explicitly prompt things in a way that didn't introduce things we didn't want and we had no way of telling it what we didn't want. So I'm very happy to see that. And then, of course, all of the usual stuff feeds into a regular case sampler. A VE loader, empty latent image, VE decoder, and so on. So what do we need to do to get the model set up and running? Well, if you check down in the description below, I will have download links for both the full and quantized versions of the GGUF model. You can also find the link here in the workflow itself. And for those of you who don't know what a quantization is, a quantization is a watered down version of the original model. So City96 here has done a phenomenal job of giving us different versions of how the Hydre model is watered down all the way up to a BF16, which comes out at 34 gigs, then a Q8, which is probably the closest that you can get to the full Hydre in terms of watered down and then Q6 and so on. The smaller the Q number, the more watered down it is and the more issues that you'll have with generating the model. With my 3090, I've been able to generate with a Q8 and I've had to use a Q6 
when doing the trick that I will show you later on in the video. However, with these quantizations, you should be able to work with a GPU that has 12, 16, and even go all the way down to eight gigabytes of VRAM with the Q2 version. However, I would not recommend it. So when you've chosen the quantization that you want to run on your machine, Q6 or Q8 is my recommendation, go ahead and download that to your Comfy UI models folder and then place it in UNet. And those files go in here. Once you've done that and you refresh your browser, you should see the model or models that you've chosen to download appear in here. Once you've done that, we then need to get the text encoder models, which are these four over here. Again, I'll place links down in the description below. And you need to place all four of those models into the models and then text encoder folder. Now, it's worth noting that if you've used Flux previously, one of the models that Hydream uses is the T5XXL. And so you don't need to re-download that if you already have it saved. However, the Clip L and Clip G are unique to Hydream. And it's unlikely that you will have used the Llama 3.18B Instruct FPA previously. However, if you have this downloaded because you've been messing around with the LLM, go ahead and put that in the text encoder folder as well. Finally, we just need the Flux V, which you can place in the models V folder over here. And again, you may already have this if you've messed around with Flux. And that's pretty much it. You are good to go. These are various images I've generated with the Q8 version of Hydream, where I've experimented with different samplers. So over here in the case sampler, you can see sampler name and trying out different samplers handles the image generation process slightly differently. And you can see the results here for the different samplers that I've used. I am working on putting together a PDF to compare all the different samplers for Hydream, and that will be released first to my Patreon. So if you're interested in that, please do consider subscribing to my Patreon as it massively helps the channel out. And you'll see that the image quality is incredibly amazing when it comes to the Hydream image generation. However, as with Flux, you'll know that in some of the images, which is why I chose this prompt in particular, the skin looks a little plasticky. You kind of get that airbrush look that is not uncommon with Flux images. And that is likely happening because we're using a quantized version of the model. As you can see here, the images generated on KaijuGen, my image generation platform, which does have Hydream on it. So do check that out if you want a easy way to use Hydream to use the full Hydream models in a pay as you go system, you'll see that the image quality is quite a bit better coming from these models. So there's a little trick that we can do to try and improve the image quality on these quantized models. And that is using a little custom node called Detail Demon. And what this does is I've used it before on Floods. I have a short video on that. If you're interested, it'll be down on the description below. And it goes in and gives additional layers of detail to any images that we're generating. And you can see here with the, the result that the detail demon version of this exact same prompt and this exact same seed with these different samplers has a considerably better result in most cases. There's a couple where I think the non detail demon version performs slightly better, but for the most part, the versions that use detail demon have significantly more detail and um, substantially improved skin when compared to the base version. So you'll find this workflow over here. I'll go through it briefly, and if you're interested in it, it will be available on the Patreon. And like the previous version, we have our model loaders over here. We feed that into a model sampling SD3. We've got our quadruple clip loader, our Ve loader, and our positive and negative prompt. The main difference here is we've broken up our K sampler into their individual components so that we can add in this detail demon sampler. So let's go through it relatively quickly. So the central component here is this sampler custom advanced, which allows us to break out the various components of our case sampler. Many of these components will be very similar to what you've seen before. So we've got our noise generator, which is set here. We've got our CFG guider, which is set to 1.0 and this is the same thing on the K sampler. We've got a K sampler selector, which allows us to set our sampler name. We've got a empty latent image node here, which sets our latent space. And then we've got a basic scheduler here, which sets the number of steps and the denoising rate, as well as what scheduler we're using. 
the new components come in as part of the K sampler select. So we covered this a little earlier. And instead of going directly into the sampler custom advanced, the sampler feeds into a lying sigma sampler, which I've set at these parameters. And then that feeds into the detailed daemon sampler, which I've set with these parameters. Now I will be experimenting with this further to see what are the best results to get with Hydrine, but I found that this is a pretty good starting point. This sampler then feeds into the sampler section here in the custom advanced, and then our output goes into the VAE decode. And the result I'm showing you here are actually made with the Q6 quantization. And the reason being is that I couldn't quite get both Detail Demon and the Q8 model to run on my 3090. I suggest you try it out, but your mileage may vary. I have had some issues with my GPU when I push the VRAM to 100% and or close to 100% and using Detail Demon was pushing me right up to that 90-95% VRAM usage and that was causing some issues. So coming under the Q6 model, I am very pleasantly surprised at the results that I'm getting with Detail Demon. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it, subscribe, and do consider checking it out on Patreon as it really helps the channel out. Over on Patreon, you'll find the Detail Demon version of the workflow, as well as the comparative PDF of the different sampler names on Hydra. Finally, I did mention earlier my image generation platform, KaijuGen. It's a little image and video generation platform that I've thrown together. It's got a whole bunch of models on it, including Hydrain, Kling, WAN, and so on. I try and keep it up to date with the latest models. And it's a great pay-as-you-go system, and you can mix and match on images generated in one model with image to video with one or several video models of your choice. Using it does help support the channel, so I do hope you'll consider checking it out. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.